Today, I want to entertain the idea that abstraction in object-oriented programming always equals pragmatism from an economical perspective. So usually the argument goes something like this. Because we've got a long backlog of features, we need to ship fast. We can't work with abstraction. We can't work with refactoring because we have features to ship. Another common perspective is startups, right? Startups that are figuring out what product they're building. So the assumption for this discussion is that you think that lean is a good idea, that you embrace the idea of pivoting fast, pivoting quickly. Or you can see it from the agile perspective, release early, release often, right? So build your product as soon as possible so you can get it out there, get it in front of customers, customers give you feedback, and then you can iterate and try again, right? Pivoting kind of makes sense, right? How could you know exactly what your customers want? You might be thinking about it in incorrect terms, and instead of sort of silently pondering that for ages and ages, you just get it out in front of a customer and, to get, and together figure that out. So the assumption for this discussion is that you think that that's a good idea. But this video is not about lean, nor about pivoting. My argument essentially is this. It seems that if you want to pivot, if you're expecting to have to pivot, that means you are expecting massive change. And in object-oriented programming, whenever you're expecting massive change, you need abstraction. To be kind of crude, you could, for example, say that I'm oversimplifying. But with the concept of dependency injection, the whole idea is that you can defer. You need something that implements a particular interface, but you don't necessarily care what it is, or rather, you don't necessarily know what it is at this moment, which means that you want to defer. My battery died. And I'm not sure if it was because of the cold or because I just generally never charge it. But let's continue. What I'm saying is this. It's kind of like the general consensus is, in order to go fast, I have to write bad code. And with bad, in this case, I mean code that you would somehow later probably want to refactor, but you choose not to refactor now because you just want to move fast. So I guess the argument would go something like this. Specific code is faster to write than general code because figuring out abstractions is difficult. And fair enough. I mean, that makes sense, right? Solving a specific problem in programming is, a lot of the time, easier than trying to solve the general problem. So from a business standpoint, right, from a business point of view, from a startup point of view, from a, I have a client and I need to roll out features, for all of these scenarios, it kind of makes sense to say, well, let's not worry about the general stuff, let's just focus on solving these specific issues as quickly as possible. Here's the problem. I think it's true that solving the general problem is more difficult than solving the specific problem. I agree with this, but I don't think that's where the problem lies. The problem is this, that solving the specific problem is easier if you know what the specific problem is. But I would argue that in software, and I don't think this is a particularly controversial statement, in software, we more often than not don't actually know what the specific problem we're solving is. I'm not talking about where you upfront know exactly what to do, right? I mean, if you're implementing a sorting algorithm, for example, right? You might actually know exactly what that algorithm does. But for software that has clients, where it's ambiguous, where, where the user requirements might change over time, I mean that usually we know roughly what we want, what they want, but we don't know exactly. So the point is this then because we don't know exactly what application we're building, the smartest thing we can do from an economic point of view is to stay flexible. So what I'm saying is, forget about software for a minute. Just think about lean. Just think about if you're launching a startup, right? Assume you're in the stage where, okay, I actually want to develop this product. I'm not Still not entirely sure exactly what the product is because we can't be 100% sure, 100% accurate on how we're actually supposed to do this. So the point is that we should then defer as much as possible. And then you interject and you might say, oh, but okay, that's again the whole thing about when you're building slowly, when you're building really rigid applications, really uh, solid application, when you're refactoring into something great, right? But now we just need something quick and dirty. My argument is no, you don't need quick and dirty. Think about it this way. When you pivot, what would you rather do? Would you rather say, well, I'll take this whole application and I'll just throw it out the window and I'll restart from scratch? Or would you say, I'll take this tiny bit of the application, throw it out the window, 
write a new piece for that uh, part of the application and dependency inject that piece instead. I consciously said to throw out, not to rewrite, and I consciously said dependency inject, right? Because open closed principle. What I'm saying is that to maximize the chance of being able to reuse code in your pivot, you should clearly decouple your system, consciously decouple your system. So what I'm saying is that abstraction doesn't mean that you have to solve all of the particular problems. It just means that you need an architecture that doesn't say, oh my God, I need to rewrite the whole application. I need to throw out everything and start from scratch whenever you discover a new requirement. And I'm not talking, this is not the software developer perspective. This is not the perspective of the guy saying, oh, but source code must be clean because source code wants to be clean. It's not, it's not la pula. Right? It's not arts for art's sake. It's not code for code's sake. This is a business point of view, right? This is saying if you want to be economical, if you want to be able to pivot with as low cost as possible, right? Then you need to build flexible architectures, right? Then you need to, at every, at every step you take, you need to say, okay, wait, in case we, we need to pivot, right? I'm not saying in case you need to change things that are stupid. Don't change, don't anticipate stupid change, but be smart about the things you're anticipating. You say, okay, potentially we could deliver more value if we would take this path instead. So then you anticipate that change. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that you solve that specific problem as well. Of course not, right? But you abstract just enough so that, let's put it this way, there's a seam in your system where if that happens, if, if you get to the point where you want to change that particular thing, you have a logical place in your system to throw out the other one and build a new one. So what I'm saying is that when you're breaking design principles, you're spending time building yourself into a corner that you can't get out of without throwing out massive pieces of the application and rebuilding from scratch. And the open-closed principle says that you can, if you actively try to find the right seams in your application, then you don't have to throw out massive pieces of your application. You can just throw out smaller parts of your application because you inject the members that do the work. You just figure out what the seams are between all of these different pieces. So let me wrap up before I go off topic. The point is just this. When putting abstraction versus, when saying abstraction versus pragmatism, my answer is that it's not a continuum. They're not on the same scale. In object-oriented programming, to, to abstract is to be pragmatic because it's saying, I probably don't know what what solution I will need, how this works, how I will deliver value to my customer. So I need to build for the opportunity to change my mind. When it comes to performance, I totally buy the argument that performance you should worry about later because performance generally messes up abstraction, generally messes up good architecture, right? Because performance goes towards the specific. Per performance says, we've figured out exactly what we need to do. Let's do that thing brilliantly, superbly good. So, so this is why you, you can say performance versus pragmatism, right? Then I completely buy this argument because performance you can do later. Just build your feature and make sure that that's the right feature and then we optimize later. But that argument does not hold for design. Because the whole idea of design, the whole idea of architecture is to build your applications in a flexible way so that you can change your mind later. So, so that you can say, ah, actually, we have a bunch of customers who want this. Let's pivot in towards that, right? Or, oh my God, we've, we've built this completely wrong and nobody likes this and we should move in this direction. Pivot into that direction. Or competitors start to pop up and they do something that you don't do and, and you figure, oh my God, that's we have sort of the same problem, but they're solving it in a better way. Pivot towards their solution. That's flexible architecture. So I said I would wrap up and then I didn't wrap up, so let's now actually wrap up. If you think I'm totally crazy and that this is idiotic, please do give me a heads up in the comments. But also, in this world of, or in software, where you have the ability to pivot very quickly, you should work together with business. And whenever new business requirements come in, you pivot quickly towards that because you have that opportunity because you have a good architecture. And it starts from day one because pivoting starts from day one. This is not something you do in the end. This is not something you do in the end when you've figured your product out because you never figure your product out. Like business is just constant pivoting, constant, constantly 
trying to reshape your products to fit the demands of, of your customers, right? Because evolution, right? Survival of the fittest. Survival of the one who can most perfectly meet customer demand and customer demand is not static. Customer demand changes. The customer's demands changes. Let me know what you think. Feel free to leave angry comments. Thanks for having this chat with me and I'll see you next time.